Well, I started out uh, taking piano lessons at the age of six, and uh, it lasted for six years, so I, I quit when I was 12. I had to move from Portugal to Kuwait. Uh, and then when I got back, I started playing electric bass, and uh, then I moved to electric guitar. And uh, that's about the time when I met uh, Gustavo, because we were involved in this uh, death metal scene here in Porto. And uh, we were probably the, the better known bands uh, in Porto at the time. And uh, then the band quit, uh, split up, and uh, I had to make music. And uh, I was alone, and uh, uh, my 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 solution was to start making music with uh, machines and drum machines, uh, computers, and so on, using the first trackers and that sort of thing. I stopped making music. At the time I was studying law and it was not my thing. <laughs> so I, I quit that and uh, I moved to London. I was studying uh, live sound for some time and then uh, I had a PA company when I got back. That didn't go very well. <laughs> and uh, uh, at some point I went to work uh, in a casino uh, as a live sound operator and uh, well it, in a way it was great because I I earned a lot of money and I could invest in a lot of instruments and new machinery and uh, I think that was the, the point when I t really took off and I started making music on my own uh, and later, uh, I got involved with uh, Granular, and uh, uh, Rui Eduardo Paes put me in contact with uh, Philippe and Jonathan, because they had this idea of uh, uh, creating a band with uh, improvisers from Porto. And uh, that's when the fanfare, uh, the, the marching band, project started. The idea was to, uh, it was like a parody, uh, uh, just playing with the idea of this crazy marching band playing out of tune and messing up themes and songs and uh, we did both, li uh, both uh, electric and uh, acoustic uh, Well, to me, it's it's going against the norm. Uh, one of the reasons I left uh, the piano lessons w was because I couldn't play my own stuff. I, I was just a kid, but I, I was already playing with the piano and trying di different different stuff. And whenever I had to to study a piece, it was like boredom. To me, it's freedom. You, you can do whatever you want as long as you respect uh, other fellow improvisers and, and have an ear. If you listen carefully, and you, you don't have to play all the time. <laughs> It has to, to do a lot with uh, your relations, with friends and people you meet and people you have uh, things in common, common interests, and then you get invited and you invite other people whenever there's empathy and an interest, of course. There aren't that many people doing improvised music, so you kind of 
go to the same places and uh, you kind of meet all the people uh, whenever you you're in those places so it's it's a lot easier than if you were in Germany say or England or France whatever well th this uh, th th the point we're at uh, is the result of a lot of compromise and and uh, a lot of goodwill of all the people doing it and uh, it has brought this this far but uh, I think at this point um, people are getting more organized and uh, say sonoscopia and even granular I know they're not uh, as active as they were some years ago but still uh, they're a reference so it has a lot to do with organizing yourself and uh, pushing the scene a little bit further um, so I think with a lot of people studying music and, and realizing that uh, mainstream music is not enough there has to be something else there has to be some freshness uh, about the music you make not just playing mainstream music and standards or whatever classical pieces I think it it can really go far <laughs>